so very nice to see you on this Saturday from Mailbag. We are taking your questions. That's what we're doing. It's the three of us hanging out here, answering all your questions that you have submitted here on Collider Mailbag. Who are the three of us? Well, you asked. Yes, you did. And now you get it. First, Dennis Zhang. What's up, Dennis? How you doing? What's up? It's a nice laid-back Saturday, taking viewer questions. We had a great uh, Collider Jedi Council this past week. So great Jedi Council with Freddie Prinze Jr. and Sam Witwer, as well as a great schmodown between Hal Rudnick and Sam Levine. It was it was uh, it was good stuff. Yeah. Joining us, she's back again. It's Wendy Lee. Hey, Hello, everybody. Wendy. Hi, Christian. Hey, nice Dennis. To see you. Hey. All right, let's get to it. What have you guys been asking, and what are we going to say? We'll probably lie. All right. Well, the first question comes from Ant Money eighty three, who writes, "Hey guys, my name is Anthony. Love the show. I've watched every episode for over two years. I have a few questions about X Men Apocalypse. Do you think the movie is getting overshadowed by bigger comic book movies like BVS and Captain America: Civil War? I'm a huge fan of the movies, and I feel it's not getting the same buzz as those two. I'm also curious about your thoughts on what direction the X Men movies will go in the future." I know we're getting more Deadpool and X-Force, but what do you think about a young Cyclops, Jean, Nightcrawler, and etc.? Last thing, do you think we'll see Oscar Isaac as Apocalypse in future movies? I think he's going to be great, and I would love to see him again. Thanks for answering all of my questions. You guys are awesome. I do think it's being overshadowed, and I think because if you look at it in sports terms, right, you have the DC and Marvel, which is basically the Red Sox and the Yankees, and then you have someone like the Cardinals, which is a good team, really good team, could probably win a championship, but you're not paying t attention to them as much as those other two big teams. And it's to, if you think about what Apocalypse, I mean, excuse me, Days of Future Past did, it warrants a lot of respect that this movie's coming out. And I think that once Civil War is done and then the marketing push begins, I actually think that Civil War is going to help the hype behind Apocalypse because people will be so jazzed up after Civil War comes out that now it's like, okay, oh, now Apocalypse is coming. You're going to get Batman v Superman, then Civil War, then Apocalypse. But the focus has been DC, Marvel, and then, well, Marvel-esque, yeah. but, but Fox slash uh, X-Men. No, as far as where I think it's going to go, I think Deadpool's going to have a lot to do with the next force, like you mentioned. I like your ideas of, of the other spinoff movies with the, with the characters of so Cyclops and Jean Grey. The question is, how are we as fans going to accept the new Jean, uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops and all, all those people too because if we accept them and the same way we did for um, Quicksilver in Days of Future Past then it's very possible that they could do that it's just it's, they have to hear fan reception first too because I think that they were listening to fans when they got Gambit's see you later Gambit's not coming back mm -hmm. and if he is he's not coming back in his own movie I just <laughs> don't believe it's going to happen Dennis is X-Men Apocalypse being overshadowed and um, do you think there's going to be some more spin-off movies besides Deadpool and X-Force yeah I definitely think it's being overshadowed I I'm really looking forward to it I love Days of Future Past I really like the trailer I think you and me did a trailer reaction yep. to that yep. and I know some people didn't care for it but I actually really liked it so I'm, I'm looking forward to it but it's getting overshadowed because I think you had Batman v Superman I mean that's self-explanatory yep. you know it's something no one's ever seen before we've never seen those two characters on on the big screen together Captain America Civil War you get to see Iron Man and Captain America and their two teams battle out so those two kind of have a hook to them Apocalypse you know I know who he is you know who he is comic book fans know who he is the general public they really don't know they just like okay this is some new villain these, the X-Men are gonna right. fight uh, is he gonna come back in future movies I don't know it, it's tough to say because are they gonna save him up or, or maybe do one of those things where they defeat him but then he goes back into slumber and like you know there's a little hint or post credit scene that that shows that no he's really still alive right something like that uh, as far as the spinoff movies let's yeah let's wait and see how how they're re received in this movie first yeah Wendy what do you think do you think it's being overshadowed I don't know if it's so much like being overshadowed as I feel like maybe they had a misstep with the the first trailer we all saw in Apocalypse not looking as completed as everybody wanted mm -hmm. to see and everybody the internet kind of exploded saying he looks like a Power Ranger he doesn't look right and then I think from there it just kind of rolled it's like a giant snowball rolling down the hill but I would love as a fan of X-Men I would love to see like a Nightcrawler standalone film yeah I mean I, I think it goes back again to I hope that this Nightcrawler is as good as Alan Cummings' Nightcrawler. I this, that's why this movie. I think people are sleeping on it, but you have to think about what summer movies besides Apocalypse, Independence Day Two, um, Civil War. Which ones have 
the most hype on him. This is like get away from the first like three weeks of May. It's one of the less exciting summer seasons. If you think about it, I mean, I I could be wrong and start going, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. But can you think of on the top of your head which not, are the ones that really stand out? Not really. We kind of because we had Deadpool come out in February. Yeah. We had Batman v Superman come out in March. Right. You know, and and with the uh, Civil War and X Men Apocalypse, those are both May movies. Suddenly we're in June, and it's like, wow, we most of the highly anticipated movies have already come out. So. Yeah, I mean, like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles coming out in like June. That's or July, something. June or July, but again, I that's think, a, I think it was June because I think it, they pushed it up or something. Yeah, like all right. Here's here's what we have coming out for the summer. Here's your here's your list of summer movies, and tell me which are the ones that you're gonna get excited for as we get um, through the season. So we have Captain America: Civil War, obviously, um, the Free State of Jones, Angry Birds, Neighbors Two, The Nice Guys, Alice Through the Looking Glass, X Men Apocalypse. I don't know what that is. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, <laughs> The Conjuring 2, Now You See Me 2, Warcraft, mm -hmm. Central Intelligence, Finding Dory, Swiss Army Man, <laughs> Indepe <laughs> in Independence Day Resurgence, um, the BFG, Tarzan, The Purge, mm -hmm. Election Year, Secret Life of Pets, Ghostbusters, Ice Age, Lights Out, Star Trek Beyond, the founder Suicide Squad, mm. which is probably one. Yeah. Um, yeah, Star Trek Beyond and Suicide Squad are the two that I think are pretty, you know, yeah. on, on, more on that level. But yeah. even still, it's not as like all the big stuff is really coming out early. The powerhouses are, are coming out early. There's other ones here. Now, that's not to say that some of these movies that I just mentioned don't turn out to be the awesome. best yeah. movies of the year. No one's saying that Civil War or any of these movies that are coming out are going to be the best. It's just the ones that have the most hype around them, for sure. So, I mean, Ben Hur didn't look great, but maybe maybe it surprises us. You never know. So, out of the movies that I mentioned, and there's other ones. There could be other gems that I totally forgot. Which summer movie do you think, besides the ones with the most hype on them now, should have the most hype, will, and what will be the biggest surprise? Go ahead and comment and let us know. All right, what's next? Gabe McDowell writes, Hey Collider Crew, my question is now that Star Wars and Harry Potter are starting to do spin-off movies, do you ever think that Lord of the Rings will ever have a spin-off movie? Ever is ever. So <laughs> do I think ever? Yeah, I do actually think ever because I I don't know what's going to happen in 20, 30, 40 years from now, but I think it might even happen sooner than that. I think that there's been talk about it. I think that it it's one of those things where maybe New Line, if they still have the rights to it, and, um, and Warner Brothers goes... Yeah, let's let's we need another franchise here, and uh, you know, Hot Hobbit was okay. What if we spin something else off? I'd like to see that world world spin off a little bit more too. But the the problem is is it's where it comes from, and if there's no more Tolkien stuff to really spin off, there's some there's some yeah. stories here and there. But the question is, how much more are they going to expand, and is Peter Jackson going to be involved in it? It's a tricky situation, but I think it could happen. What do you think? I think so. I think. Maybe sometime in the ten next ten or fifteen years there'll be a spin off movie. Yeah, I think with The Hobbit, because you know, I found them enjoyable. They were disappointing. They were a little underwhelming. I think the fan reaction was like that across the board. Um they're a little more hesitant to come out with a spin off movie. Right. And I think Peter Jackson I think he's gotta be done, you know? Done with the franchise. Never I know. Mean, and unless maybe he just like, you know, needs a hit or something kind of like maybe when Brian Singer came back to the X-Men franchise, maybe something like that. But yeah, I, there's a, I think it was that like kind of like anthology book, uh, The Cimmerillion. The right, yeah. right, right, right. So maybe they'll pull some stories from there. But I think eventually we will get something just not anytime soon. Yeah. All right. What's next? All right. Next is from Frank the Tank, who writes, what do you think of the allegation of Marvel paying off critics to trash the movie, for example, Batman v Superman? I'm not sure what to think about that. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that it's idiotic. I think it's beyond ludicrous. And I, I, even on Mark and I, Mark did a Rogue One trailer review, and I saw a comment. All right, Collider Video, this just proves you're in Disney's pocket. Ah! You're a moron if you say that. You're a moron. Because it's like Disney can't do that. Do you know how much trouble that they would get in if they were paying off YouTube critics? Do you know how dumb that sounds? For them to pay off, they could lose their empire if it was found out that they were paying off critics. It's moronic. It, is, it makes no sense. And even if a negative review comes out and someone 
reviews and reacts to a trailer or something that Disney does, and it's a bad review, it's still publicity. It still gets out there. People, so they don't care, and they're not gonna go, please say something nice. Please say something nice. They don't need us to say something nice. The titles say it themselves. And I get it. I understand that, oh, because they didn't like Batman v Superman, they must be in the Marvel pocket because they're gonna love Civil War. I already know it. We've talked about this. God forbid we love Civil War. God forbid I already see the comments. I know it. I'm embracing it like Tyson in 86. I'm ready for it because it just doesn't make sense. People want excuse. I get, I totally get that you love Batman v Superman and you should. If you love DC, you should. You should embrace it. You should act like a Star Wars, like a, like a sweaty, the same way I act about Star Wars, the same way that Schnepp is about all of his other stuff. You should embrace that. But how dare you? How dare you say people are getting paid off because they didn't like what you like you sound ridiculous shave your head go to sleep <laughs> eat a blanket <laughs> Dennis. it, is, right, it is absolutely ridiculous because where were all those people when we were talking about how great that first super batman v superman trailer from comic-con was me and john did a review of it and we talked about how much we loved it how awesome it was one of the best trailers of the year how come people weren't saying we were getting paid by dc right. for that it it makes no sense even a, like it, on a logical set level, you, it doesn't make any sense because why would Disney pay critics to trash Batman v Superman? Disney does not make any money if Batman v Superman is bad or it doesn't make any or it has bad reviews. Disney only makes money if Marvel movies are good. And first of all, they, they wouldn't pay critics to, to like just Marvel stuff. But hy hypothetically, at least that would at least make sense. Why would they pay critics to bash DC? I think people have a misunderstanding. Marvel and Disney, while they are like competitors in the sense of like, oh, we want to kind of outdo DC or whatever. They don't care if, if DC makes a ton of money. What, it doesn't hurt them at all. Right. They, they, they get money from their movie. So all they care about is making sure that you spend your money on their movie. What's a more likely conversation that, that you think a Disney executive coming in and saying, hey, Batman v Superman did amazing numbers. That's good. People are still excited about superheroes. Yeah. They're, they're still, the, the genre is still alive. Our movies good. People are really excited about the genre still. All right. Or do you think they want to hear Fatigue. There's superhero fatigue. Yeah. Uh, oh no. Well, I mean, the the audience. They're not. They're not rooting for anything to fail. They're just. They're still saying. I guarantee you that they, they saw the movie and maybe they said, okay, look, our movie's better, and they should if they think their movie's better. But to say that the critics are getting paid off, it's, it's really, it's really moronic. It it's really ludicrous. is. Yeah. It's it's crazy. Do you, like think about that. If let's say hypothetically that actually happened and and the critics got caught, critics would, you know, be like ostracized from the community yeah. disney would be like oh get blamed and no one would boy people would boycott their movies it doesn't make any oh, sense dennis i'm sorry my, my the alarm to my porsche just went oh off yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 all, right, all right what's next brian souter writes dear dennis christian and the whole collider crew thank you for your recent videos covering WonderCon. this just whetted my appetite though as i can never really attend the big conventions due to work and family the late G4 cable channel used to do two to four hour long specials covering every day of the SDCC and other famous conventions as well. They would have their cast interview numerous celebrities of film, TV, and comics. They would show trailers and have segments spotlighting cosplayers each day. They would show the newest toys and games making their debuts at the convention and much more. Any chance that Collider could start doing this too and allowing us viewers to get a small experience of what you and the lucky attendees get to see at these events. Also, how about having Chris Gore come on to Movie Talk every Tuesday to do his DV Tuesday segments as he used to do on Attack of the Show? Thanks for all of your incredible programming. I eat them with a spoon every day. Signed by Chris Gore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dennis, what do you think? Um, look, we would love to do something like what you explained, but I, I just have to be real here. We don't have the resources to do that, you know? I would love to have like our own little platform on the floor and be able to interview. We are gonna be at Comic-Con, we are gonna cover it, we're gonna interview celebrities and stars and all that stuff, but we just have a limited amount of people, a limited amount of resources that we can do, so we can't do the whole thing. I, I, I'm pretty sure like what you're talking about, their budget is probably like 30 times what, mm -hmm. what our budget is gonna be right. for it. So it's something, sure, if we were bigger, 
you know, and we, we could do that. We would, but we just got to be realistic and cover what we can. Look, the most important thing goes back to the conversation we had not too long ago. If you guys want to see this channel do more stuff and like you've been doing is to continue to like the videos, comment on the videos, tell your friends about the videos. But look, what, we're very proud of what we've done in the last like month or so the, with, with the views, the amount of subscribers, everything that's been happening new with programming. this new programming, everything with this channel, it's going in that direction yeah. for sure. But like Dennis said, it's just right now, resources are a little tight. Mm -hmm. For the crew that we have, we get a lot of stuff done with a small crew. Now, as numbers grow, and as you hit that million, two, three million subscribers and a consistent viewership, um, we will be able to do more things. So that's why when we tell you guys that like it, tell your friends about it. Like I always like to talk about when people ask me, like my family, like, well, what are you doing on Movie Talk? It's the Sports Center f for movie news. Tell people that. That's the best way to explain it to them. They like movie news. They want to get caught up more in the news. Movie Talk. They want to get more about to be a little bit more involved and get questions in. Uh, mailbag. They want to talk about Star Wars Jedi Council. You want to talk about heroes, excuse me, comic book movies, you, you go to heroes. There's so much TV, yeah. TV talk. Mm -hmm. There's so much stuff that we're doing here, but it's up to you guys to keep sharing and let people know about it. All right, what's next? Oliver Boris writes, hey guys, should the stars align and we do actually get a Star Wars Old Republic movie or series, who would you like to see playing Revan? My pick would be Michael Fassbender. I think as proven, he can nail every aspect of this very complex character. The Fassbender is a great choice. Um, the problem is that he's so kind of tied into Magneto at this point, and then he's going to have Assassin's Creed. Do I think he could pull it off? Yeah, I do. Um, I also think someone like Tom Hiddleston could pull it off. I, th I, I think that I want to see Tom Hardy play Darth Bane which even though he's played Bane before, a different vein, vein. Um, but I think that for the understanding of what Drew Carpetian's novel was, but Revan's a very complex character. I don't know when or if they're ever gonna make a canon. They were supposed to make a canon in the Clone Wars, but there's, it, it depends. It's, it's hard to say who should play him because we don't know what the character is right now. Because as of today, he's not canon. So tomorrow the character could be ca could be written in a book or something, and it's a completely different character for the most part, and it's something else. So it's hard to say who I'd want to see cast as him right now. Yeah, I think Fassbender is a good choice, but like you said, he's associated with Magneto. But he, I think he could still do it. Uh, I thought of, like Christian Bale, he's associated with Batman. I think he would be good. One that isn't too associated with any superheroes is uh, Guy Pierce. I think oh. he could play, pull. A little off older that. though now. He no. is. He is. But I mean. He could pull off someone that a, a mysterious character that has yeah. kind of a hazy past that kind of has a dark past. And also remember that in the video game, you could pick if you were a guy or girl. So yeah. you know what I mean. True. Maybe it could be a girl. Female. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, th I, yeah, it's it's weird because in the in the novels again, which is it's legend, a, it's a guy. It's a guy, but again, none of it's canon. Uh, what's next? Well, since you guys didn't ask me who I would pick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sorry, Wendy. Who would you have? <laughs> did you play Did you play Knights of the Republic? I didn't finish it because I didn't have time, okay. but I did play it um, as much as I could. I think maybe Luke Evans. Luke Evans is a good choice as well, no, too. Like, I like he's that. He's got a good look, you know, for it. Uh, all, right. all right. What do you got? On to the next question. Connor Wang writes, writes hey, guys, I want to play a game. It sounds like Jigsaw. Mm -hmm. I want to play a game. He's under the uh, table. <laughs> oh, no. Would you rather be able to watch only the films nominated for Best Picture for the rest of your life or the equivalent number at the top box office? So eight nominations equal eight top eight uh, top grossing films. This is too hard for me because in the inside of that top eight is going to be Star Wars, and I can't take Star Wars out of my life. I just can't, especially now because you know Rogue One is going to be one of the top grossing. Episode eight is going to be one of the top grossing, as is Han Solo and Nine. So yes, my life revolves around Star Wars. So that <laughs> if you take, if I'm still allowed to watch Star Wars, and then then it becomes a harder thing for me because you get the quality storytelling and what we love about film during the Oscars during you get some of the best movies during that Oscar period um, so it's a tougher call for me when you take Star Wars out of the equation how about you yeah it is a tough call because there's so many good movies with the best picture nominations though there are a lot of years too where some of my favorite movies don't get nominated for Oscars and they also are not the big budget movies right. either so I'm kind of you know out of luck there because uh, I, I got to choose oh it's tough Man, yeah. I, you know, honestly, I, I, I'd, I'd have to go with the Oscar nominations just purely on. So no Marvel movies. It, yeah. It's tough, but then you know some of those top grossing ones, you, you'll see Transformers thrown up in there too. Yeah. You know, like oh, for, 
Oh, top yeah, grossing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Top grossing. That's going to be in your 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 it's, thing. But that's ten. But that's ten of them. I mean, you look yeah. at the top ten grossing of oh, last man. year. You know, and the funny thing is that sometimes you get the top ten grossing, and you get you get movies like uh, I mean, American Sniper, which was an Oscar film though. You too. know what though? You, sometimes you get the crossover though. Yeah, that's something the, the American like Sniper. I, I think Mad Max may have fit into. I don't know how much it moved. I made a decent amount of money. I don't know if it was money. top ten. But I don't know if it was top ten, but it made a decent amount right, of money. Right. Once in a while, you'll get those blockbusters. Yeah, that like, like get a, well, American Sniper was the most profitable movie of the year last year. Yeah. Not well, two years ago, um, and it was nominated. So, who knows? Wendy, what would you take? Oof. At the risk of having to see Transformers for the rest of my life, I think I'd pick the top eight grossing just because I know I I love those comic book movies and those really rarely gets nominated for yeah. Oscars. I mean, they're, you know, so... So you take the grossing? I would take the grossing yeah. for entertainment purposes. Yeah, I understand. Um, okay, let's go to the next one. All right, Ian Scott writes, Hey, Collider, would you be open to doing commentaries for just X-Men First Class and Days of Future Past before Apocalypse come out since they're the only movies now part of the current continuity? I don't know if we can... We, we would... I don't know if we can co- cover both of them in that amount of time. Um, I'd certainly be up for either First Class or Days of Future Past. Um, I love First Class. It's one of my favorite X-Men. I always go back and forth. It might be one of my, fa- my favorite. But we're doing it for Captain America Civil War. So we... Excuse me. Captain America Winter Soldier for Civil War. And I think that if we can choose between the two of them, I would pick First Class. I don't know if we can get to both of them. But Dennis, what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think we would go with Days of Future Past. It's just the one that I would love to do both, but we just don't have enough time. We already right. we still have to do the Return of, Return <laughs> of the Jedi to finish off right. uh, Star Wars original trilogy. We're gonna try and get Captain America: Winter Soldier in before Civil War, and really time is limited. Our schedules are limited. I think if we had the main choice, we had to do Days of Future Past because that was the one right before this next one that we're going to see. That ties into it, kind of. That doesn't mean we won't do first class later on. It just means timing-wise, it makes more sense to do Days of Future Past now. Maybe sometime in the summer we can do first class. Well, it's the same reason why, again, we're doing Winter Soldier, because even though Captain America won, you could do it, because it does tie into the the movie with Bucky and everything, too. But the second movie was the Russo Brothers, and now we get the Russo Brothers. So, uh, yeah, I think it's probably more likely that we'll do Days of Future Past, but I like Um, Okay, last one, Wendy. All right, Colin Clark writes, Hello, Collider crew. Been a fan of the show for about a year now and haven't missed an episode yet. I'm a huge fan of TV and movies and have quite the collection. Last week, I really didn't want to wait until Tuesday to watch Star Wars again, so I was contemplating downloading it, and then a thought came over me. What if in about 10 years or so from now, I get onto Amazon or Vudu and learn that those companies went out of business and the hundreds of movies I had purchased were gone. What would happen to my library? Would I have wasted all sorts of money? We all thought VHS, Blockbuster, and the Tooth Fairy were here to stay at one point. Hope to hear back from you guys and hope you all have a spectacular day. What do you think, Dennis? Well, I think it, uh, with something like that's always a risk, but no. I mean, you know, Amazon is a huge company. It would take a lot for them to fold. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it ends up being because you have that physical media, you feel like, oh, I got the DVD or the Blu-ray. It's like, I'll always have this, I'll always have the player. If you have a Blu-ray player like I do now, when was the last time you actually busted out your DVD player and put a DVD in? Right. You know, it, like I don't <laughs> you have ever a Blu-ray do it. player and you, and you still put the DVDs I in? I just watched The Force Awakens on Blu-ray. Is that what we're talking no, about? No, no, no. no, no, no. He's no, saying, no. He's saying if you have a Blu-ray player, yeah. and, and why would you use a DVD if you already have a Blu-ray oh, player? Oh, yeah. Right. So what I'm saying it. is, so with the physical media, I think you feel safer because you have those things. But if realistically, you already are phasing them out in your life. Yeah. And digitally, that's kind of going to be the same thing. Let's say 10 years from now, you're like, oh, I don't have those ones I bought on Amazon. Trust me, there's going to be some 8K, 10K, 12K <laughs> format yeah. that you, you, you're you going to be like, I love that movie. I need it on, on that format. And that, you know, that 1080p is just not cutting it anymore. In about 10 years, you're going to be doing this. Boop, boop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Like Back to the Future, you'd be scroll. I, I'm not even kidding. Yeah. Like they already have these type of things that they're developing now. Like, like Google Glass. Who's to say that your your library w- that you have on these won't be able to transfer over into a new medium? You're talking about ten years from now. Like, look at all the technology that has developed in the last three years. 
Not much less. Ten. Ten. I'm telling you, ten years. You're not going. You're, we're going to be the people in Wally. Yeah. We're going to just be <laughs> sitting there, like people. just sitting there, watching and typing whatever you want to. Virtual reality, all that stuff. You're not going to care about your Amazon library in ten years. I don't think. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. Uh, I think on Movie Talk the other day, we we're like. Once that VR comes out, man, we'll just be doing the shows virtually. <laughs> like we'll, we'll all be at home, right? Yeah. And then there'll be like a three, like a hologram of each of so us. Everybody holograms in. Yeah, yep. we all hologram in. We don't actually sit across from each other. Yeah. Um, okay, that's it. That's our show for today. It was a lot of fun. It was short but sweet. I enjoyed it very much, and I did because I was able to share my thoughts with Dennis Zhang. Dennis, where can they find you? You guys can find me on Twitter at Think Hero on Instagram, Dennis.tzng. Always love when Wendy Lee joins us here today. Wendy, where can they join you? You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and Snapchat at Wendy Lee Zaney. And for me, you can find me at Christian Harloff, Twitter, Instagram. Please check out my show, Schmoes No Movies. We just did one last week. It was a lot of fun. We talked about overrated actors and actresses in Hollywood. It was a great discussion. Go and check that out. Thanks for joining us. Make sure you check out the movie Schmodown as well. It was a lot of fun. And we'll see you tomorrow. Hey guys, if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.